South Wigston has a great heritage, rich industrial heritage and prior to that, but it isn't always appreciated by people locally. And while lots are known about Orson Wright and his role in South Wigston, not so much is known about the newer parts of South Wigston, like the Fairfield Estate. Do You See What I See is a great way to bring people together, particularly with the coronavirus pandemic there's been increased loneliness, isolation, people are looking for a way to connect. And Do You See What I See allows people to connect through their shared heritage, the stories they have from where they grew up, where they live now and the cultural heritage they share. Nothing and no one is getting me in there. <laughs> We started this project just before Christmas and as a start we decided we'd make an online exhibition of our favourite Christmas objects, telling the stories behind them. People brought in a really diverse range of objects. We had records, we had Christmas decorations, we had photographs. And people talked so beautifully about the memories that they had, the stories behind them, really bringing it to life. Hi, today I've brought in my little drummer boy. He has very lovely memories for me. Um, he belonged to my grandma who passed away 30 years ago. It was something that was always kept in a glass cupboard. In those days, things were treasured and they were precious. They weren't throw away like they are in a society these days. And me and my cousins and my brother used to stand and stare at it in the glass cupboard. And we couldn't wait until Christmas. That was a special time when grandma would get it off the shelf and put it on the dining room table. And we all used to sit around the dining room table in eager anticipation of winding him up and playing the music. Right, so we've got one from Rutland Water Lace Day. That's got hedgehog on. And we've got great, uh, great tipped from birds. Uh, Mother's Day 2007. Christmas 2006. When you're using them, you come across the different bobbins. It just brings back the memory of the time when you, you bought them, or a birthday, or your grandson, or granddaughters. Um, days that you spent ha making lace with people. Um, they're just great memories. And, you know, the different birds and things, it's just, they're really beautiful. Really beautiful bobbins. It's, it's a pleasure to use them. This, this project's been, in, been really good because it's made you look at the, well, not only the history of this area, but the, the history in general, um, people's history. And I think the bobbins connect with that because they're my history and things that I want to remember. So, so the project's been really good, good for making me look at things differently. The Greater Wigston Historical Society have a great archive of photos and information about Wigston, South Wigston and the surrounding area. Their old photos have been fascinating to look through and we were lucky enough to have a talk and guided walk by Peter Cousins from the Historical Society which really enlightened us about the uses of different buildings and the history surrounding Orson Wright and the community he built in South Wigston during the Industrial Revolution. There was lots known about Orson Wright, but not so much about the newer things in South Wigston, like the Fairfield Estate. Lots of our participants had brilliant stories. Um, we, when the children were small, um, my, I lived on Kenilworth Road, which is the road that, that we're standing on, um, and my children went to school in South Wigston, and this is the bridge that we walked across every day. Um, originally in the 60s, um, we could drive cars over it, but now it's, it's, um, it was quite useful because if the traffic on the main road got um, snarled up, you could come this way, but you can't any longer. This is the uh, house that, uh, where Carol lived. Um, I lived at the, the next corner. We were just two bookends really in the, in the street. And then everybody on this side of the street, well, the whole area here, we just knew everybody and we're all in and out of each other's houses. So we're a real community at that stage. Because of the workshops that have taken place, I've really uh, got to know South Wixon far more than I ever did. I've enjoyed meeting the people that are taking part in the workshops, that's been most interesting. But I shall never again go through South Wixon without having a look at the shops and the changes that are taking place all the time, uh, which probably I didn't observe before. It's enabled me to actually revisit my past, so to speak. Uh, and live it again and the more we've gone on, the more depth we've gone into it, the more I've learnt about my life really, and the early days when we were growing up. And that's been great for me because last year was hell, you know, I was on my own, my wife had just died. I'd gone down in the fits of depression and this helped me a lot. 
I feel my mind's now in a better place. And of course it's enabled me to talk to other people as well. And that's been useful. It's enabled me to go out and learn to talk to people again and to interact with them. And I found that great. This project has brought people together. It's given us companionship at a time of isolation and it's helped people explore the heritage of South Wigston. Not just the old South Wigston, but the new South Wigston, which has thrown up some really interesting stories. Lots of the participants would like to continue learning more about their heritage after the project's finished, as well as meeting up with each other. We hope that the exhibition and the project will inspire other people to look into the heritage of South Wigston and learn a little bit more about it.